hello, and welcome back. It's been a while since we've been here. We had uh, last week off the 4th of July. Hope you had a good holiday. And it's uh, time to get back to work. It's the online movie show for Monday, July 11th, 2016. My name is Phil Hall, and uh, for the next hour, we're going to be talking about movies. Uh, Tonight we have uh, two rather invigorating guests on the program. Uh, later in the show we have the lovely and talented Tracy Birdsall calling us from Hollywood, talking about uh, our latest projects, and she's quite a busy lady. And uh, Peter Pinho of the PP of PPRN is going to be uh, joining to uh, hang out with Tracy. Thank you. And uh, on the line right now, calling us from uh, the Ocean State, a.k.a. Rhode Island, is uh, Chris Esper, who is a filmmaker, and he's now a writer. He has a new book out uh, called The Filmmaker's Journey. Chris, welcome to the online movie show. Thank you for having me, Phil. So... <laughs> somebody's having fun with the sound effects tonight. So, Chris... Uh, <laughs> Congratulations on the book. That's certainly no mean feat to write a book, but uh, why did you write a book, and what is the book about? Uh, well, I did, Well, the filmmaker's journey started out as a video blog on my YouTube page uh, of the same name where I would give just advice to filmmakers, uh, talking about um, my experiences, both good and bad, and kind of lead filmmakers into a, into a direction where they feel like, oh, I can do this, uh, because there are so many things about this industry that many don't tell you about or give you advice about, you kind of give it totally blind. And so I felt the need to share my experiences through that medium. And so with the vlog, you know, it, uh, I try to keep it uh, three to five minutes, but of course there's only so much I could say in that amount of time. So I thought, oh, okay, well, what if I expanded this into, into a book? And I never, having never written a book before in my life. And so, uh, I just basically sat down one day and I thought, okay, what, what is it that I want to get across? And so I just started typing furiously and, uh, and, uh, ended up with this, with this, uh, with, with the story, I just like sharing my story and sharing all my advice and everything I've learned over the years and being a filmmaker and just the whole idea that, you know, the, this career is a never ending journey and you're going to be learning forever. And no matter what you do, there's always room to grow. So. Well, Chris, some of our listeners may not be familiar with you, so how old are you, and how long have you been making films? Well, I'm 26 years old, and I've been making films since uh, uh, for about six years now. I started when I was in college at New England Tech and uh, studied, studied there for about three years, and then when I left school I, in 2012, I started, started doing it professionally for about almost four years now. So I've been, I've been actually making, making movies for about six years, and really started to seriously do it professionally for about three or four years. And this includes doing videography and now, now, now I run my own production company. So it's been a good couple of years since then. Well, I've never been to film school, so I'm curious to know, what do they teach today in film school? Is it strictly film appreciation history or the, the, the nuts and bolts of making a film? Or do they even teach you about the business side of the industry? What's uh, the curriculum like? Well, you, you ask a very interesting question because I, went, I actually I went to a technical New England Tech by definition is not a film school. They're um, they're a technical college. So uh, the first day in, in class, I was on the camera immediately uh, making making student films and commercials, all sorts all sorts of different uh, material. Uh, my original intention was to go to a a film school or an art school in let's say New York City, and I actually toured a, a school over there, but unfortunately. I realized very quickly how competitive it was and also uh, how expensive it was. So I decided to uh, go to New England Tech, and, and, which is by no means a bad thing. New England Tech was a great school. And if, if anything, I feel that I learned more going to a college where I was on the camera the first day than I would have just sitting in a classroom just studying film theory because that's, because that's, 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 that's rather easy to – well, not that it's easy, but it, that's rather – simple and I really want to know about the actual process of making a movie and appreciating film is great uh, but I found that I could do that on my own and expand my own knowledge which is pretty much what I did when I wasn't going to school I would read up on films I would watch the classics of cinema of the past and present and uh, and I've always been quite a quite a movie buff so I so I kind of use knowledge both in school and outside of school so I think now I think nowadays uh, 
it's more focused on the production side, which I think is very important because I think, because uh, I think it's important to have that hands-on experience uh, rather than just sitting in a classroom just talking about what it's like to work on a movie set. And I also did take business classes, uh, so there, there was a little bit of business knowledge. Yes, that's a, one of the things that I found. Uh distressing about uh, the film world, particularly with so many people who come into it uh, at an early age, is when it comes to show business, they're infatuated and focused almost exclusively on the show, and they don't understand the business side of it. And once yes. they actually get into it, uh, they're baffled. Uh, they, a lot of people get ripped off, particularly uh, doing the festival circuit and there are a lot of unscrupulous characters out there posing as oh, film absolutely. reps. And, yeah. uh, and that's actually uh, one of the experiences I share in my book is I had an experience where one of my first short films out of college, I, and uh, first of all, there's no such thing as distribution for short films. Like there, there's no money to be made from short films. You know, it's just, it's unheard of. There's really not a market for it. But uh, there was one day I was, I was just doing some browsing on Facebook and I came across this distribution company that, was, was indeed looking for short films and not thinking much of it. I submitted that very night. I got a message that the, the distributor saying, well, we, I loved your film and I want to include it in my film library. And, and of course you get, you get a cut of the royalties. And I'm like, wow, like I had to process this for a second. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, did my $500 short film really just get a distribution offer? Like I was, it was shocking, but then sadly the company went belly up and, and, the, but, but it was strange because this guy wanted money for me to pay in order to get my film distributed. And of course, being a young college kid, I just thought, okay, I'll pay the money. Well, $200 later, I pay, and I only made, and I made a whopping $5.50 off my investment. So the guy, the guy literally just took my money and ran, and uh, as he did with many other filmmakers. And, you know, you learn very quickly, you can't trust anybody. Uh, well, you can't trust everybody, I should say. And you got to be very, that's when being a good businessman really comes in. Indeed. But with short films, uh, there's really, as you say, there's really no market for the short films at the um, uh, at the moment uh, outside of the festival circuit. They're not shown in theaters anymore. Uh, you could probably see them right. on Vimeo or YouTube. Uh, sure. Do short films exist today primarily as uh, calling cards for filmmakers. What's the point of making a short film if there's no audience for it? I I think you just you, I think you made a good point. It's uh, I think it's used specifically as a calling card. Um, and also used to establish what kind of skill you could bring to a feature or some other uh, big project if you were to go to Los Angeles, let's say, um, and really make your name that way. But I think I think short films are great because it's a great way to learn your craft, how to tell a story, and uh, and that it's good training to make a bigger project, I, I believe. And also, and the festival circuit. I mean, I when I go to film festivals, there's so much talent that you discover. And then they go on to make great feature films, and it's it's amazing when you see that growth from the short film to their feature film, um, and to just see that growth from beginning to end, you know. So I think I think short films certainly do have a purpose, uh, but uh, but I think one shouldn't go in, shouldn't go into a short film expecting to make money because then I mean you shouldn't really go into filmmaking anyway to only make money because then you're just doing it for the wrong reasons. You have to have a a passion for it, I, I feel, and, and by doing short films is where that passion comes from. Well, Chris, I, you make a living as a filmmaker, is that correct? Yes, correct, yeah. So when did you decide, I'm going to start my own production company and uh, focus on this as your uh, profession, as opposed to a lot of filmmakers who make films on the side while holding other jobs? Uh, I think, well, I, well, when I left school, I started doing videography and like I started doing uh, weddings and uh, events and music videos, commercials, that sort of thing, corporate videos. Uh, so that's pretty much how I started making my living. I didn't start my production company uh, just until this year, actually. I started in March of this year. I started Story, uh, Stories in Motion, which is uh, my company, and it's my way of still like... It's, it's because the one thing, because videography has this really bad taboo that uh, all your creativity is stripped completely, uh, but I don't feel that way. I, I like to still use my narrative storytelling skills in each and everything I do, uh, even, even if it's just an event that I have to film or a wedding, you know, like every person or every company or every um, uh, product that you're doing a commercial for, let's say, 
everything has a story, and I feel it's important to bring out that story in anything that you do, even even if you're just doing a 30 second clip. You know, uh, so I, I try my best to use my talents as a storyteller and as a filmmaker, even in that arena. So I still, so I mean, so it, so for me, it's a pleasure to be paid as a videographer because I still feel like I'm being a filmmaker. I'm being that artist that I enjoy being. Well, you have a film that's currently uh, in release in the festival circuit uh, called Please Punch yes. Me, which is a wonderful film. Uh, Thank you. Tell, tell the audience what this film is about. What's the story behind the making of the film? Uh, well, Please Punish Me was it started out as a script by Tom, a, a story actually by Tom Paolino, and uh, who's also a very gifted actor. And uh, he um, he had written this story. I think I think he said nearly ten years ago, and it was sitting on a flash drive. And I met him one day at a at a movie screening, and he came up to me, he introduced himself. And we were chatting, and we had a good conversation. And he mentioned that he had this screenplay, uh, and I said, "Well, please send it to me." And um, it was only seven pages long. And the story was essentially about a guy who feels overly blessed in life, and so he seeks to be punished for his curse of feeling overly blessed. And so it was a rather intriguing story, and and, and I read it, and it had potential. It needed some work, but I saw there was something in it. There had a, had had a lot of heart to it and you've seen the film so you know that the what it's about but the one thing that remained the same was the ending uh the ending is what tom had written originally and when i read that i was so intrigued by it that i knew i had to do it just on the basis of that scene alone um i found myself relating to it in that it's a story that's about not settling for just anything and it's a story about doing what you love and ultimately, it's about because I think I think this, the character of Scotty, he's kind of spoiled in a way, where he um, feels like he he's had this good in his life, and now he feels like okay, finally he needs to be able to experience some some bad, uh, some some wrongdoing in his life uh, in order to feel satisfied that he's going down the right path. And he ultimately feels he ultimately feels like he's succeeding down the path that he doesn't like. And I ultimately felt that way too when I left school because uh, I felt that I felt okay. I'm done with school. What am I going to do next with my life? And so I found myself just not really, I wasn't really doing so much videography work or even filmmaking. I was just kind of really doing nothing. And, you know, it was kind of, it was a little depressing. And so when I read it, it came at a perfect time in my life. I thought, oh, wow, I'm at this stage of my life. I have to do this script. And so then my good friend, Rich Camp, who's a really funny and talented screenwriter and, and comedian, he took the script, rewrote it, and kind of, uh, uh, high end up the comedy and then um, high end up the story and add a little bit more to it, give it some more depth and character development. And so from that point on, uh, we had a finished film, uh, a finished screenplay rather. And so that's when we held auditions. Uh, I worked with um, my good friend of McCremmy Productions, Carissa Michelazzo, and uh, she and I teamed up and uh, gathered together a casting crew, which included David Sackle, who's a great theater actor and film actor, Joanna Donofrio, Lori Bacon, Bradley Rhodes, Tally Clemens, Mark Carter, just just a whole slew of New England talent. And we filmed it in January 2014. And I think it took about five days to film on weekends. And uh, I, think, I think I completed, completed it within, within the next year. And then I think June of 2015 is when we showed at the Cable Car Cinema got an excellent reception, and so far it's been in 13 film festivals. Well, hopefully 14, the New England Underground Film Festival is coming up in yes, October. Yes, absolutely. How do you determine what festival you want to put your film in? That's a good question. Uh, this is advice I also give in the book, is that it's never easy. When I first started, I start, uh, I started out just by blindly submitting to multiple festivals, and I never even knew if that festival was even right for my project. And I realized very quickly that that's absolutely the wrong thing to do. It's probably the worst thing anyone could do because because every festival I feel, and you could, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong on this as someone who runs a festival, every festival has, I feel a niche audience or a market that they want to reach uh, or uh, a, a specific type of film that they like to screen. And so